Welcome back and very good morning, guys. Time for Market Moves on MT4 today on Friday, 26th of um, August. Holy smokes, uh, was a fast week until today here. Fast week with actually limited trades only. We didn't uh, make our hands dirty a lot, we have to say, but profited from market motivation a fair bit, which is obviously cool. That's like uh, how you would call it, uh, uh, in this case, like uh, high efficient trading, I might say, just clicking a couple of times and uh, being lazy by the beach uh, on the screen, whatever you've been doing. But for me, it was rather observing and managing trades, which uh, can be a bit of a headache because you know, if you never make it right, you never make it perfect, as you never know how the markets act, react, and how they behave. Nevertheless, I think we did pretty much perfectly all right so far. We have to say our account grown substantially. We had the biggest loss, 15 euro actually. Okay, that's kind of interesting here. And we had the biggest profit, so a single trade profit, 3,200 3, euro in this case. Yet we have to, of course, say that the trades were split, right? So like it was actually rather a 4K of profits um, in this uh, in this regard so yeah obviously things are working out all right let's recap um, the uh, current positions or let's recap also the uh, previous positions we had uh, on in the uh, oil market i still have our buy trade on the market uh, and this uh, trade which uh, obviously kind of uh, has been retracing off that resistance slash support area the market kind of found some sort of a resistance point in this case and didn't really move uh, much higher so what we can observe at the moment is just simply the market uh, uh, turning in a bit of a, a sideways pattern what often helps at least me is just uh, uh, moving to like a higher and even a further beyond uh, time frame to assess the current market situation and uh, of course we don't know how the month will be going to end uh, in this case we still have uh, next week let me check what we free trading race i think uh, yes monday tuesday wednesday until the month uh, ends and the question is going to be how much more upside momentum in the uh, oil market will we see how much more motivation for this market to run higher will follow up here and uh, i would say looks actually pretty much cool so far for this market to push uh, towards even higher levels. As we can see, the supportive trends have been uh, a kind of uh, moving and pushing markets towards higher levels, looking quite good here in this case uh, for further upside potential. The weekly chart has been in this falling trend line and this was broken towards higher levels. The daily chart yesterday, however, it gave us a bit of a, a bearish sentiment and the bearish sentiment uh, pretty much is uh, caused by first of all the uh, uh, resistance or acting resistance in terms of the uh, uh, 50 moving average where the market has pushed towards and then finally kind of found a bit of a resistance it wasn't really touched we have to say but uh, the market on wednesday blasted to the upside trade was triggered looking good yesterday the market returned and this is a bit of a bearish candle as it's an engulfing candle which engulfs the previous candle Basically, we have a bit of a higher high and we have in particular a lower low from the uh, uh, kind of opening and closing price perspective here, telling me that the potential uh, slight falling price action motivation uh, might be uh, the outcome. Of course, on the other hand, and that's the, the question here, the tricky uh, situation um, in this case, uh, the market might just face and uh, really uh, kind of act accordingly as per this little resistance area. This area here, which we could see, it's the uh, weekly resistance to the R2 line where the market has pushed towards now a uh, falling or kind of a uh, uh, turning slightly lower thereafter. And now obviously kind of uh, acting potentially at least with sideways price action potentially and uh, towards even further rising prices uh, should the market at least continue. What I like in general is that first of all, we've broken out of this resistance point here. I like the market is generally kind of quite positive. I don't see this as a big trend change with the market falling. However, we've had this in the past. Um, obviously, at times where the markets uh, push beyond a certain trend line and you think the market might turn to the upside and instead it's just like giving you a bit of a bearish turnaround candle and changing direction thereafter. 
So we have to see if the same is true here in this case and if the market really kind of changes direction maybe again. Uh, one thing I see here, and that's the positivity of course, I still go by the market in general, medium to long term, with the geopolitical tensions, with also what we've heard of course uh, from Saudi Arabia that uh, the oil output might be slightly reduced. I see that on the fundamental, from the fundamental side, uh, for the damaging market motivation here uh, for um, price developments could uh, be the answer. Damaging in terms of like uh, um, positively seen that markets uh, and market prices will turn much more towards higher levels. I like the idea and I like also that the oil market of course in this case looks quite good and in this case obviously I would expect that the markets here it could guide us uh, with uh, upside positivity. Of course general key thing and that's the can't emphasize this enough. Uh, that's this huge area, which is what I think uh, bulls and bears at around the uh, the X factor. You could say here. Yeah, um, I forgot there's a term for it, but these these kind of yeah, well the X uh, the X uh, uh, kind of intersection. You might say where the market motivation based off recent supportive motivation here uh, could be in for some further upside potential. Just this needs to be sorted out first, right? Sorted out as in the market needs to kind of find ways to uh, kind of uh, guide itself towards higher levels based on the uh, recent trend line here and the market starting slowly to push higher. This takes some time here until the market regains uh, momentum here. And of course, the US dollar motivation is another big story to keep in mind. And uh, of course, with this I'm talking about the dollar index we assessed the uh, situation yesterday where we said hey we might face that this market faces a bit of a, a double top basically uh, two topish points one on the left one on the right uh, kind of in the end uh, uh, causing further motivation for the markets to push uh, uh, to the upside uh, in this case the question remains uh, sorry to the downside in this case the question remains if this uh, double top resistance area really is in play or if the market starts pushing again back towards uh, higher levels here with further motivation, of course, to kind of uh, run um, run uh, towards uh, uh, towards the again 110, 112 area. Stronger US dollar would be a bit of poison for stock markets potentially at least, right? So, and we observe that 10-year yields, uh, and uh, you might uh, you might uh, uh, kind of quote me on this here, might be a bit boring for you, but I, I would like to to understand that bond markets obviously are super interesting as they are the real market guidance for you as they. Uh, kind of uh, uh, they are influenced by um, a mark uh, by by inflationary figures by rising uh, prices, which is why uh, bond yields have risen so much and so sharply over the recent couple of uh, months, as well as of course interest rates from central banks. And uh, brings me to the other point: the Jackson Hole Symposium uh, in Wyoming uh, this uh, weekend. I mean uh, uh, today, tomorrow uh, is going to be uh, interesting. It's not only that Fed uh, Fed boss Jerome Powell is participating there. Where was it here? Um, but lots of other uh, ba uh, famous bankers. We have, uh, of course, Bank of England. We have uh, Kuroda, who's there from the European side. We have uh, Schnabel, who is a member of the board. So we have a ton of people um, attending the meeting and or the, the symposium, as it's called, and it's going to shape market motivation potentially somehow further. Back to bond yields, as much as they rise, they would offer, and that's something which is like an easy analogy, obviously for you, um, rising yields would tell you that it's kind of a bit of a risk-free uh, trade, basically uh, buying bonds and just uh, correcting correcting uh, interest here. And we can see, of course, what price is rising in the general, say, economic activity, of course, for uh, households. It's kind of quite harmingly as uh, the prices turn expensive. You can see that uh, left and right, uh, quite astonished here, but that's maybe more a bit of a German thing uh, in Thailand. Uh, most households purchase um, uh, um, um, not, uh, not, uh, uh, not olive oil or a sunflower oil, uh, but palm oil. Palm oil is quite fairly cheap here. Check the prices yesterday. It's about 97 baht for the regular uh, sunflower oil. I like it also. Sometimes I do French fries, frying something at home, and when I don't want to have the nice olive oil taste, uh, like for any salads. So um, the prices, obviously, in Germany, my German friends will know that have risen uh, substantially. Um, actually, you could even think of uh, re-importing it, basically here uh, from Asia uh, back to Europe um, of some sort. Anyways, that aside, uh, price rising of course telling us that uh, a stronger dollar might be the outcome and vice versa 
with bond yields growing. The recession story uh, drags on, guys. Wow, that's really crazy. Two-year yields uh, uh, have actually climbed towards kind of quite uh, uh, fresh highs, at least uh, tackling the, the recent high point area. And I have nothing here in my mind why I would believe and like to believe my the stock markets would continue to the upside. So it's just to me, it's the dangerous uh, analogy, of course, here in the uh, central bankers are gathering that might be interesting. Maybe something positive is coming out there. Maybe everything is uh, uh, dragging on as normal. I don't see this coming. I got another uh, article in this case. Uh, I found it on Yahoo, quoting that also on my on my uh, daily uh, comment this morning where the Yahoo boss uh, uh, from China was uh, China's uh, biggest company actually was stating that, hey, the next decade is going to be extremely crucial and the next three years uh, uh, troublesome and potentially uh, dangerous as Ren uh, Tsingfei uh, has, had, has told um, the Huawei uh, staff um, and he stated that we should not focus on uh, the company itself, uh, should not focus too much, uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, on their cash flow but rather on profits and to see on how to survive in the next couple of years and things could turn quite sour. Of course, we have a global economic decline momentum and the, the historically potentially painful period, as he claims, might drag on. And I see hence that we might rather be in a sideways slash bearish pattern. It doesn't mean that the stock market might go and move somehow a bit higher. That's something I might say, okay, could work. But um, I would use these levels for now rather to be uh, to be on the short side of things to get further entry opportunities here and um, to the downside. And uh, just to recap, we've made a ton of profit uh, this week. Uh, I know that some of you guys were even leveraging higher than me uh, when I had uh, one or the other phone calls with some of you guys. Uh, is he in? No, he's not. Peter's not here at the moment, but uh, stating that uh, holy smokes, they're kind of doubling the account with these kind of trades. Guys, please be aware it's quite risky here. If you're following uh, the positions I take, uh, well, I do it on a less riskier basis, right? So my account grows uh, slowly, but please just make sure that uh, when you're following my positions here, of course, the stop losses are quite far away. So uh, please just reduce your position sizes if you do so in order to avoid uh, uh, just taking blindly similar positions with the account says I'm riding here. Quite a few of you uh, I know obviously have smaller accounts than that definitely for sure. And uh, if you're having a small account of a few thousand bucks here, just don't use my position sizes here. If you are following the positions, the ideas here, I trade on my account. For me, I am in the game, I'm in the markets for a long period of time. And uh, despite managing my own fund also, um, it kind of, of course, the underlying assets and your mindset might be slightly different. The, dis uh, the, the, the risk obviously is when the markets give you any potential chances to uh, uh, offer you some profits, but you over leverage, then your, your mind might kind of uh, really uh, get stressed out. You might need to close or you might close positions when the markets at times don't go in your favor. And that's obviously where uh, really um, driving with a throttle full, uh, full power ahead uh, on, the, on the German autobahn or say on the uh, US highway, 110 kilometers an hour whatsoever is just a bit of a different story here in markets. Of course, it affects me uh, and impacts me in general also day in, day out, just to say I see that there is quite a bit of room uh, for these trades. And honestly, on my fund management, I still have the short positions on. Um, it's just here I put profits, but on my fund management, I still uh, am in in those uh, positions. Anyway, so headwinds from China, potentially, we of course don't know. Um, but uh, if we have uh, the biggest company in China kind of telling us there might be something uh, um, uh, from Huawei's tech giant uh, corporation, that there might be something negative around the corner. We might at least want to listen and digest a little bit uh, what goes. The Australian dollar as a bit of a risk on risk off currency is uh, not doing anything much. As long as we keep within the negative range of uh, say last week's bear candle, again, turnaround market, right? So two weeks back, extremely positive last week, boom, market lower. And we stay within vicinity of this downside momentum. Um, I still say or see that the monthly chart still looks actually quite good. So the monthly could give this market uh, some momentum to the upside, falling trend, pin bar market pushing slightly higher so that uh, at least to me what could uh, support some positivity. And I think it depends a bit also on the stock market outlook and definitely on this 
Wyoming uh, uh, Jackson Hole Symposium. Um, uh, if I'm not wrong, I should know, actually, I think, uh, yeah, um, uh, Jerome Powell is going to talk today, some other global bankers uh, tomorrow, and uh, that might be something interesting. So keeping positions open over the weekend, uh, of course, big uh, high leverage positions, back to what I just said, might be a bit tricky, or at least uh, try to protect them as much as possible. The problem is only with the uh, trades of uh, of in or during these uh, or those times that should markets kind of uh, gear up into one direction or the other it doesn't really matter where you put the stop loss as the market might just simply stop you out at different levels so keep that in mind when they're trading uh, uh, markets uh, in this case silver and gold started to rise slightly nothing much to say i just still look at this uh, from the long-term perspective Let's see, I'll give this market some chances. I'll look at this also from the historical price development uh, point of view where the markets to me is rather the lower it goes in any sort of buying territory. I'm not sure uh, if we're going down 10, 12. I mean, like imagination is key, right? So when we go down, say the 15 US dollar mark would be something I might say I could imagine. I just don't think the market will turn down so much, but it depends, of course. So the supply demand question and definitely, of course, paper gold, paper silver uh, trading on the, the global exchanges. So that's the key thing which we have to take into consideration. Markets can go anywhere. They can go towards one dollar. Whatever I say doesn't really matter. I see this as a, a for the future, though, as in something interesting and important. And I could imagine that medium long term also some sort of dollar weakness could kick in. The current dollar rally, I think it's mostly fueled by the uh, rate hikes, by the so-called aggressive moves from the Federal Reserve. If we are looking historically, there's nothing uh, aggressive about uh, the current interest rates. They had been much higher in the past, and it's not that uh, long ago when interest rates had been higher. So this is not something uh, of a potential long-term uh, uh, impact. Uh, so we'd have to see uh, medium term on how the market goes. I just see that recent uptrend motivation, the COVID trend to the upside. And uh, then here, uh, that was 2008 and 10, after a financial cri crisis, the market started to push back towards higher levels. So there's no harm for me to increase positioning here and prepare and check these and use, make use of these uh, um, long-term uh, low price ranges here at the moment i think we just have i have the opportunity maybe to see that this market could gear up momentum towards much higher levels at some point that's for silver gold is slightly better looking at the moment however i'm not invested involved in the gold market too much might happen here gold euro actually looks quite sweet as this has broken out somewhat towards higher levels however it's just of course the a gold US dollar and then the uh, euro US dollar currency rate which uh, exchange rate which uh, drives this market slightly higher though the uptrend as we might say gold in euro denominated is not far off from all-time highs yeah 1765 1890 so let's look uh, it historically quite close and uh, might telling us how the situation in the euro zone is uh, I'm at least happy in the uh, denominated in euro looking at my gold portfolio not overly bad at least uh, given the fact that some i had bought at very low levels here um, a couple of uh, couple of years uh, ago and it's not actually not that long ago and some other at higher levels uh, in between girl that's my take for these markets trading wise something interesting might brew at the moment that's some sort of a longer term daily chart uh, motivation where i see the market could fall further bearish price action retracement to the upside and now we've retested that exact zone here parity right so very important parity zone where i said uh, sorry very important zone psychologically and technically technical support here market rising falling breaking from the downside towards the uh, parity area here or towards the one even area here and now it's uh, potentially kind of falling uh, down further that tells me that uh, market motivation towards lower levels and it could be the outcome however i would be a bit careful so i'm not going to trade this here for the time being but i would say it looks like a feasible trading opportunity looking at it from the short-term markets sideways so far it looks to me the uh, euro dollar currency pair could break lower historically on the daily and the weekly chart 
The weekly chart tells me that we might kind of reach some sort of an exhaustion this week. We haven't done much this week so far. We're in a slight bit of oversold territory. And I would say like, uh, as we've done quite some uh, handful of nice trades this week uh, uh, with amount, a big amount of profit, I would leave my hands out here in this one as the market might pop back to the upside here. In particular, with the uh, Wyoming uh, Jackson Hole Symposium and the attached speeches, uh, as I said. What else? News-wise, uh, wise, I don't have anything much. Oil we talked about, Eurocat we talked about, stock markets, uh, silver, gold, that's all of what I have on my radar. A uh, German DAX well, looks slightly positive. As I said, uh, I marked today in the hot assets, which should come out uh, anytime uh, soon. Uh, I marked that uh, stock markets are sideways. That's my uh, key takeaway, guys. By the way, you'll find these uh, every day on our web speed Swiss website where I give general ideas. Obviously, some of the open trades, some sometimes some different ones uh, also marked uh, here. Uh, stock markets I see as uh, not extremely positive, but uh, depends on. If you're following uh, my ideas here, you know, then you might get the, the points here. Dollar gearing up momentum, as we can observe, the dollar is uh, trading somewhat stronger, I guess, most uh, uh, counterparts uh, and metals are slightly uh, positive. So I'm giving you some ideas on how I see the markets and this can be used. Sometimes actually it's some uh, great uh, trading opportunities, of course, which you could base or see if uh, for the day, depending on how you trade the markets, use these bits of information to kind of clarify potentially and uh, recap how your trades uh, perform. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. All the best here uh, today. Not so many, actually. A bit of a smaller group today. Anyways, uh, Anis, hey, welcome back. We are gathering in the next few minutes, Anis, for our call. If you're free, of course, uh, happy to, to chat with you and um, see you around. Michael, cool to see you also. Yeah, group scrolling down here. Um, it's great. Anyways, talk to you soon. See you later, guys. Take care, everyone. And if we don't talk, uh, happy weekend. For me, taking it a bit easy. Weather has been extremely mixed here. We might, for the local Rotary Club, organize an October fest in October. I'm not sure if we can meet the deadlines here because bands have been flown in and we need to organize and stuff. But uh, visiting a big party spot on Sunday, potentially, to find out how this goes. Uh, Quite a few other things uh, in the pipeline here for the local Rotary Club just uh, planned our Christmas party uh, uh, last night, talked about how things might go there. And apart from this, I think it's a bit of, for me here, a quiet times, but uh, yeah, great people to meet and connect, of course, reconnect uh, as, uh, as this is the fun part here. So whenever you're in Asia, move over, come over, visit me in Thailand, of course. Uh, my house is always open for uh, some games of pool and, of course, also some homemade beer if you're keen on having a, a zip of beer. And, of course, a lot of talks regarding trading, markets, investments, whatsoever. Plenty of chances out there. So take them directly. See you, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye.